thank you so much, Mr. Hallam, for that speech. Um, and I wish you all the best on your journey home. Thanks very much. Um, <laughs> um, we now. So we now move over to our third speaker in opposition of the motion um, and our final paper speaker of the evening, uh, Mr. Toby Nosquith. Toby is the chair of the Cambridge University Conservative Association and he's also a third year reading history at Hughes Hall. Toby, you have the floor. I think the most fundamental thing to say about the motion to which we might just briefly return is that it most definitely lives. And the whole problem of tonight has actually been that everyone sort of wanted the motion really to be this House believes party politics ought to be dead. And the reality, and actually where I disagree with Mr. Hallam, and I was very surprised, I actually found more than 0% to agree with Roger Hallamon, which has been quite a sort of experience for me. But the fundamental problem is, will or will not party politics die, or is it dead, etc.? And I'll deal with that for a little while, and then I'll actually deal with the real debate that has gone on, which is whether or not it ought to die. First of all, just on the enormity of what was just said, I genuinely believe that he is not entirely wrong. We have a problem. We have a cataclysmic problem. And, and this is where I lose the entire room. I genuinely believe that we will solve that problem, not through retrenchment or cutting emissions, which isn't going to happen. I mean, to be fair, by the way, we have cut emissions more. It's one of the very few conservative achievements. We've cut emissions more in the last 14 years than any other industrialized and than any other industrialized country in the world. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> I may have discussed that specific statistic with you earlier. I believe it. I truly do do believe it. Um, but the fundamental issue is, and this is just very brief before what I actually get going we will find a solution, and it will be a technological solution. And there may be a terrible crossover, a tipping point at which many, many things go wrong around the world. But the promise of extinction, of, of total chaos, is simply not borne out by even what was predicted 20 years ago. I mean, the IPCC, very famous report in 2007, said that two-thirds of all emissions reductions were going to come from technologies that had not been invented. And we will invent those technologies, and I'm going to get a groan here. We'll do it through the market. Um, fundamentally, um, you can see I stacked the room tonight. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. Um, here we go. I have never seen, I have never seen, I think in all of recorded history, there's never been the case when young, active political people who are about to win 500 seats out of 650 are miserably unhappy. And I, and I wonder why. It has something to do with the fact that although we, never mind the human race, but the Conservative Party are about to go extinct, the Labour Party have almost never had it better. And the truth is that although we are about to go extinct, we, we have managed to transform the left. They, they, they are molded in our image. And this is the fundamental manifestation of party politics at its height. What's going on, people talk about the purges and the illegitimacy of the purges on the left. This is the party machine in action. This is its vital engine, its guts at work. And it's working very, very well. The way that policy will be formed in the next five years, which will essentially be Cameroonian sort of 2010 conservative policies, which I don't really mind, actually, thank you, Keir Starmer, will be because he has a parliamentary majority. And actually, that's the fundamental issue here. Are we going to have a revolution? Are all of the problems of human history going to be solved if we do have a revolution? No. And almost all revolutions just involve one party as opposed to many. As a matter of fact, if there was a revolution or there were these citizens' assemblies, which, by the way, are a really bad idea, um, it would simply be party rule or party management or factional management by another name. Because on my piece of paper, I have one thing circled, which I scribbled in my red pen, which is human nature, which is what this debate... <laughs> y 
you can also see the nature of lemmings, if you like, but um, human beings as well. Uh, <laughs> there was a point? I mean, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is my friend uh, looking forward to trading in his, uh, his vote for this uh, super Trump 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 supreme elite executive body made up of random pensioners from all over England who are going to decide what happens. Does he look forward to having, you know, the sort of racist, lunatic jury system applied not just to uh, criminals, but to all of our collective politics? No, don't clap. Um, <laughs> I, I think that was extraordinarily eloquently argued, but also wrong. Um, the fundamental issue here is that juries are actually a good thing, um, but the idea that a group of people is selected by sortition, which is something which hasn't been used really anywhere for about 600 years, um, it just won't work. And also, it will never happen because people won't agree to it, because people don't want it, because all of the much vaunted special interests in society will avoid it, because the party system will not buckle. And that's the real point of tonight actually, before I get on to what should happen, let's be absolutely clear what is going to happen in the next five years. It is extremely unlikely there will be a right-wing or a left-wing revolution, or a centrist one, by the way. There will be a Labour government. It will be, unfortunately, very strong. In five or ten years, I hope the right will rise from the ashes. But that is the answer to the question. Party politics isn't dead because Keir Starmer is going to be, most likely, unless things really change, Prime Minister. So we have to accept that. We have to com completely accept that the motion, defective as it is, says for a fact that unless pigs fly, the beast will keep slouching on. But what should happen? Is party politics really awful? And I, I feel a bit difficult here, because I don't actually want to be one of those hacks who defends the very system which they supposedly want to become a part of. The reality is that party politics in this country in the last 20, 25 years, because of Mr. Blair, let's be clear, has been a terrible failure. We, we are now poorer than we were in 2007. There was a Labour government in 2007, just to score some points. Right? We are now much, much, much less regarded on the world stage. And that which we do, we are known for, largely has to do with, with our decline in the world and our inability to help people around it, shirking any duties that we might have had um, or otherwise. Uh, probably, yes. Can you just spell out white because of Blair? Uh, it, oh, yes, okay. This is a very rare conservative who also loves Tony Blair. Um, you'll all, we'll, we, we shall all become that after five years of Starmer. I'm just asking. Well, because Mr. Blair decided to attack the Constitution and also so for government and all of this stuff and the sleaze and the corruption which conservatives have never done. But the, 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 the fundamental. <laughs> Um, you know. <sighs> Look, in terms of what should happen, it's very, very simple. I agree that party politics is a mess, but the answer isn't fascism or Leninism. It is inspirational and visionary leadership. The political space, uh, we hear a lot about control of the media, in many ways, it is actually the media that leads politics. The endless 24-hour news cycle, the, 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 con the constant, absolutely constant obsession with, um, let, let, let's call it um, absolutely nothing. And I don't know whether it requires uh, oratory or, or good character or any of the things that people cared about 200 years ago. Might well do, but in reality, Politics is about consensus of some degree, unless it's completely against the people. And what I don't understand is why so many people here don't want to defend democracy. I can't actually understand it, really. Democracy is party. That is its history in this country and in every country. By, by nature of reality and by nature of, of, uh, of human existence, that you must organize around a group of people or someone in particular who can lead. And if you're going to choose a system, regardless of whether it's wretched STV or first past the post, which was uh, ordained by God, um, it, it, it is to speak to the nation, but then to implement. And that's the one beauty of the only beauty of first past the post. It's a tragedy in this country because our politicians don't really use it. But if you look at most of Europe, Right? Politics is complete gridlock. We have managed to do this to ourselves in our own parties. It's a pity, right? It doesn't mean they're dead or that they, they should die. But 
a strong party, not a fascist party or something horrendous or something cruel, is, is something which can rebuild the world. And there really were only two prime ministers domestically in the 20th century, Attlee and Thatcher, both of whom were the culmination of decades of transformation in and of their parties. So my only advice to anyone who wants to make the world better is as much as we would all desire for human nature to be different, I'm afraid Hobbes had it right. The life of man is nasty, brutish, and short. Yes? Ah. Ah. Is it good or is it real? Is it good or is it real, right? All of the addiction, all of the problems of politics, all of the lamentable hatred, everything, is it good? What do you want me to say? Yes, of course not, right? But is it the actual force which doesn't just dominate American politics because of a handful of companies in Silicon Valley, but the politics of the entire world? Yes. Party politics is stronger than ever precisely because politicians have finally figured out how to get inside people's heads. They have an absolutely direct line and the tragedy thereof, and I will finish, the tragedy thereof is very, very simple. Either we accept that party is actually the animus of the human soul, and we engage with it, or we pretend, as Just Stop Oil and Extinction Rebellion do, that we can just shout our way out of the problem. As a matter of fact, Extinction Rebellion and Just Stop Oil have failed. And they failed precisely because Labour, a party which exists in a party system, is so scared of being castigated as like them, they dropped all their green policies. So the point to finish is this. Either you accept the world and try to change it, or you close your eyes. And we cannot close our eyes. speech, Toby. Um, a couple of notices from me before we go to vote. Firstly, is that after this debate, till Wednesday, um, voting will be open for positions served in Lent 2025, so please do vote in the elections. Secondly, is that we'll have cocktail classes on Wednesday, our final debate of the academic year on Thursday. Um, our garden party on the Saturday, um, and one last speaker event in San McAllister um, on the 17th of June as well. Um, could we please end with one last round of applause for all the speakers? And, and as I'm sure you're all aware, in this house we vote with our feet, so if you agree with the motion, so if you believe that party politics is dead, please walk through the door on your right, which is the eyes. If you disagree with the motion, so you believe that party politics is very much alive, please walk through the nose door on your left, and if you'd like to vote in abstention of the motion, please walk through the door right down the middle. But thank you so much, and have a lovely evening. Thank you.